All right, so hello. I am thankful to God. I just got into my car, just got into my car here, and while I was um, putting my seatbelt on, I looked over to the left, and there's a young girl sitting in the car next to me, and um, I said, what this little baby doing? And as I began to um, put in the directions, because I waited until I get in the car first, um, I had reached out to, I'm trying to get my, um, my laptop taken care of the person so they can't um, do it without running a diagnosis so I was like yes of course of course of course sure so I hung up the phone and the young lady came out of her car and came over to me and asked um, even though my window was up uh, she I could hear her and she asked hey can I get a job I said okay and um, I said I don't have any cables and if you know how to do it and she said I have the cables I do know how to do it so I pulled out of my um, parking spot and moved closer to her and um, then she I lifted up my the hood of my truck is it the hood just the front of my truck and then she um, connected both of them I stood back and said hey you know do what you know how to do and then um, she began to run her car. She asked me to turn my car on. Great. Then <laughs> I asked, how can I use this as an opportunity to talk about Jesus Christ? <laughs> so um, God's going to continue to put people in my path or put me in people's path either way, either style, whichever. Um, if that's going to continue to come to my heart. If I'm going to continue to have on my heart, how can I talk about Jesus Christ? How can I segue it into this conversation? How can I make jumper cables um, segue into um, have you talked to Jesus today? Oh, what's that? Huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a booger and, um, and some spinach in my teeth. So I um, ended up, I have tracks in my car and by tracks I mean um, you know those little pamphlets that um, say hey if you die today uh, where would you go or uh, what does this one say Jesus is coming back soon are you ready are you ready you ready spaghetti um, what happened <laughs> I like to put my foot up when I'm talking so um, how did I begin she was standing outside and she said let's just wait a minute our cars both need to be on and running for just a minute or two. I said, oh, okay, yeah, that's so true. Um, I remember that. So I got in my car. That's when the thought came to my mind. Uh, how do I talk about Jesus to this woman? I still don't know. Um, I pulled out my tracks and I pulled out a business card. I still have them. I have 250 from Vistaprint. Thank you, God. And... Um, in the past three years, haven't been able to share 250, but I had one. Uh, I had one, and so I put it inside of one of these tracks, and and then I got out of the car and I went over to her. Um, I don't know why I would add noise to what I'm saying to this video. In this video, I went over to her driver seat uh, where she had her leg out and just uh, prepared to come out and check the hood of her car, and I went over and I said, "Hey." I don't know who you believe in or not. Oh, wait, wait, this is after I prayed. This is after um, she had um, started her car <laughs> and her car was like, is there something you wanna do? What is it, what is it? And it just did not start. And she and, and uh, when she went um, back into her car, when she came out uh, from her car and said, mm, maybe it's not in the right, in the right spot, um, she said, let me try again. So she tried again. And while she was in her car, I just prayed and I said, uh oh, I, I am more familiar with the car starting after you're, after you're jumping, if that's the issue. So what's, I, I pray for her to solve her issue. So I started praying, then the car started. And then that's when she went in and, um, uh, that's when she told me, hey, let's just wait a while. So I went in my car, got the tracks, then came over to where she was waiting in her car, where she had just announced that we should both do. But I was just like, yeah, no, let me come and tell you about Jesus Christ while we are <clears throat> waiting. So um, 
she was um, in her car and I asked her, Hey, uh, I don't, I don't know if you already know, or, um, if I, I don't know if I'm telling you something you don't know, or if you already, rem if you remember, but, um, there is a way that we can, um, call upon, call upon Jesus all the time, whenever we want. Um, and that's totally up to, um, you, when you create this pattern of calling up on him, um, and that's the relationship that he wants. He wants total dependency. And she's just giving me the honor of listening to me, you know, as, you know, just page, she could be just patronizing me. She's like, woman, let me just wait until my car, uh, is fully, um, back to wherever it's good enough for me to drive off. But um, she did listen and attentively, but at least just giving me, you know, by looking at me. And then um, I said, I'm not sure if you know him already or I am reminding you, but I want to invite you to um, total dependency on God through Jesus. And um, I asked, where are you right now um, with that? And she said, actually, I... Uh, believe in the universe and um, calling on the ancestors and I'm just trying to get to know more about that and I said oh okay um, and I wanted to go like how limited that is when you deprive yourself of knowing God of all existence not just the universe so um, and and I asked um, about the ancestors that she also look into how that worked well for them and how that works well for the universe. What do you have to look at to know um, that total dependency um, and ex and being exclusive in your honor and your worship toward the universe um, benefits you now and forever? And she was just like, well, I'm still just trying to get to know about those those things whether they're related or um two separate things and i said oh okay um and so i decided let me conclude in this time but invite her to reach out to me so that we can grow together and coming to know more about um the jesus i'm talking about and how she can choose um uh based off of um her uh, growth and wisdom or um, who she wants to give honor to um, and that's completely your choice but I would love to um, do that with you and she was like okay and that was cool that was that's literally it her car was running and I'm just so thankful to God thankful to God but even if it wasn't running that's also how some things work in life they just literally don't change this is the end of the road for this person that place or that thing and um still God is in control that has no nothing on the identity the um, supremacy the sovereignty and the love of God it doesn't and so uh we get freedom when we uh realize that truth but I also in this video want to invite you to be um, emboldened on the sole basis that Jesus already has it um, covered. God already has it um, completely understood. You literally just reciting his scripture. You just inviting people to read with you is also um, a part of what we're called to do in the in evangelism in discipleship the invitation is based off of your um boldness that is fully um um uh, permeated by the work that god has already done god already did the work say it word by say it word for word share it word for word and be confident based off of the work that he's already done and that requires you to come and tell other people about it. Come and let me be in charge. Come and let me lead. Come and let me take over. It was a blessing to do that. It's getting easier and easier. I want to tell you that um, at first I feel dumb because I'm focused on myself. But then uh, where I am now is I um, don't feel anything about how I I don't feel or think about how I look in front of them um, because God controls that also 
God does control how you look to those people that are called to his heart, that are called to his love, that are called to his purpose. God controls that. And those that are not, that those that are not called to his purpose. And so he controls that. I immediately came out from my home, sat in my car, was to buckle up the normal steps to just literally reverse and get out. She decided on her heart, she's going to approach me. But God put that on her heart. Little did he know he had a plan for her. And my, my whole um, experience may not be to view her coming coming to Christ com committed and sold out into Christ alone but I was um compelled to do something it wasn't on my heart to tell her that it's just been um it's kind of come it wasn't it wasn't on my heart really it wasn't on my heart it wasn't uh I did think it oh okay I thought it in that time frame within that moment that I came back and I knew that I was in a waiting period with a stranger. That's when it got on my mind. But I had my, my laptop on my mind before. <laughs> so um, it's become it's become a habit. Hey, I'm in the present. But it's but but the normal elements that lead up to that that habitual thought is usually when I have a one-on-one -on -one with someone that I don't know with someone that I'm, I'm not, uh, personal with. And, um, that was the hardest in the beginning. Now it's the easiest. Can I make a left turn? No. Okay. Um, now it's the easiest. Um, but I also don't want to rob those who are in my closest circle. And so it's not always through my words with people that um, I call mom, dad, sister, brother, cousin, neighbor, people that I talk to on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. Um, it's not, it may not be through words. It may be through demonstration that I bring uh, people to Christ or bring, take them away because it's my example of how I live that they're invited to. That's going to bring them to Jesus Christ. But all the same, this video is for you listening. I hope that you can grow in your boldness of him. And when you are in, emboldened by the word that calls us to invite others, it'll become a habit. Bye-bye.